All right, guys, we're back. It's a day after all that haymaking. Uh, the wagons are still full. They didn't unload themselves overnight. Uh, it's a lot different weather today, for sure. It's uh, only about 80, no humidity and lots of wind. So it's a much cooler day. And uh, the next day is actually supposed to be in the 70s. So I wanna see if I can't get some hay unloaded today. I have a hay customer coming for uh, some hay from the loaded wagon in the top of the barn. Uh, today, I'm going to pull the baler and tractor out and blow the baler off. I have to get twine in it again and grease it really well. Last time it was just a rush job. I basically just went over the knotter, uh, get it ready. And I'm still looking at the forecast pretty soon. We're gonna cut some more hay. I am, I'd say acreage wise, I'm half done. Um, half done the hay, uh, ac acreage wise. Um, as far as total bales, uh, I'm probably not halfway done. Um, out of the six hay fields I have, the last uh, three that I have to go are very thick and they are like a different type of soil. They're not like the top of the hill type of soil and the rocks. These are more like bottom land, uh, real fertile, um, and there's some hay there. It's thick. So I'm probably going to have a lot more bales uh, per acre than I had on top of the hill. But uh, it's all right. Uh, but I have to get, <laughs> I got to get the wagons empty one of these days. Um, and I don't quite trust the weather. I left you guys yesterday. I think I had 40, 20, 20, 30, 40 bales left in the field um, that I was going to go pick up. And it rained on them. So I figured I'd let them sit uh, for today. You see how nice it is today, let them dry. But last night it rained. It rained last night. It started raining at 1130 and it didn't quit till sometime in the middle of the night. Uh, all the, uh, <laughs> there's puddles in the driveway and everything. So uh, it, those bales are gonna be soaking wet. So I'm just gonna let them sit right where they are. There was no point getting them last night because they did get rained on and I'd be putting wet hay in the barn. So if the bales aren't any good, we're just going to have to uh, stack them in the woods somewhere or see if I can't uh, give them to somebody for bedding even. Uh, but they are, they're soaked. They are wet. So, all right. Uh, I was going to spray today, but it is windy. You can see the trees moving there. It's breezy. It's cool today. What a change from yesterday. Um, I might spray later tonight. It might be an evening thing. I'll kind of take you guys through what I'm doing today, but today is kind of the uh, catch up day, the <laughs> clean up day after uh, about a week of making hay. So I gotta get this baler cleaned up. It's a mess, it needs grease really bad. It needs twine again. I'm just, <laughs> the twine box is always empty, that little twine box. Uh, I have to re-grease the hay rake, uh, the tether. I gotta get ready for the next time when we're gonna go again. So I'll take you guys along. First things first, I have to run a couple errands. I'll come back with you when I get back home. Oh, Pennsylvania. All right, guys, I'm back with you here. Uh, done running errands, and I actually bought something today. This is a steel BG86, and it's actually the 86C. There's a C after it. Uh, it's not on here. Uh, I asked what the C meant. <laughs> I asked the dealer. He said comfort, he thought. Uh, just because on this blower, the handle is suspended in like rubber bushings uh, to cut down on vibration. Uh, it has the rubber hand grip, and it also has the trigger lock uh, to lock the blower on. Um, so why did I buy a blower? Uh, <laughs> truth be told, I had one when I had my combine, my Massey 750 combine. If you own a combine, a leaf blower is an accessory that uh, I I think a lot of farmers have um, with their combine just blowing off the dust and dirt uh, it's a little bit better than an air compressor on account of an air compressor if you have a if you don't have a giant air compressor um, or a heavy duty like gas powered one or something it just takes a lot of air <laughs> and a leaf blower can make a lot of air so um, I do have this electric one this is a Toro uh, power sweep <laughs> So I don't think it's really a leaf blower. And uh, to be honest, it's not mine. Uh, this was here when I moved into the place uh, about eight, nine, 10 years ago, and it's not mine. And I have about, 
nine trees in my yard <laughs> with leaves and this thing with an extension cord it's kind of a joke i mean it, it's a it's just a small leaf blower that's electric so down here i don't have any electric so i have to burn gas anyway with a generator to make the leaf blower work and an extension cord so anytime i want to blow off any equipment i have to have the generator outside and i have to have a long enough extension cord and it's constantly coming unplugged and it just doesn't have the airflow to be able to do a good job so uh, i did break down and buy one <laughs> So I did get this and I will do a review. If you guys are interested, I'll do a, a complete review on it. This is just an overview, but I want to use it for a while. Um, I don't like to review something just out of the box and uh, I want to use it for a while. Uh, it has a two year warranty, which is nice. Uh, so I don't know, uh, we'll see. It's the first steel leaf blower I've owned. I've had chainsaws and weed whackers and that kind of stuff. So we'll see what it does. Uh, this model comes with two different uh, tubes. You have your big one and you have this finer one uh that's probably the one i'm going to use just because it makes the wind go a little faster so we're going to try it we're going to pull the baler out and we're going to blow it off uh, i have a hay customer coming in like 10 minutes so uh, i might have to splice this video together but uh, he did fill the tank and run it so i don't think i'm going to burn a tank just blowing off the baler so let's see what it does i don't know it uh, wasn't too expensive, but I'm going to tell you it was more than going to a big box store and buying something at a big box store. Uh, steel you can't get at any big box stores like a Lowe's or a Tractor Supply. And we have a steel dealer within 10-15 uh, minutes of me. So it makes it nice. Um, I do like steel equipment. Um, yes, I own a Husqvarna lawnmower, and that's just because I got it cheap. I, I have no brand loyalty to Husqvarna. It's just that's how it worked out. That was a very cheap lawnmower. <laughs> so all right, uh, let me quit talking here and get the baler outside and uh, start letting some dust fly here. All right, so I believe he said that this uh, BG8686C comes in an easy start model. Uh, I did not buy the easy start model. I have used a chainsaw that had the easy start. Um, well, it does seem like it starts easier with easy start. I am, <laughs> I'll put it this way. When you're a uh, Sasquatch that loves to pull start equipment, uh, the easy start just isn't satisfying for me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's get this thing started and see what it does. Uh, one nice thing now, I don't have to park uh, at a certain place so the generator will reach. I can basically take it anywhere. So let's see what happens. All right, it did start without the choke or primer, but uh, they did run it at the dealership. So I will say that, and it is warm today. I want to let it warm up a little. <laughs> All right, covered in hay dust. <laughs> Wind couldn't decide which way it wanted to blow, but. Uh, not too bad. Uh, probably going to take it back to the dealer because about half throttle it hiccups. So I have to see what if there's some adjustment. Uh, I don't want to mess with it. It's got a two year warranty. Why even bother? Um, but at full throttle it's good and at a little good. <clears throat> about half throttle it hiccups like it keeps wanting to shut off. So it's probably a, some type of adjustment there. See if I can get it to do it. but you can hear it, it's like surging. If you're at full throttle. That'll work fine, but. All right, now that's cleaned off, we wanna put some more twine in. Um, this is the twine I'm using. It's a uh, bale cord, uh, 7200. Sisal baler twine, uh, manufactured in Brazil. Um, so this is, I think for this pack, it was 50 bucks uh, during open house um, with a discount. But uh, 
This stuff, uh, I do have a customer that only wants uh, sisal. He doesn't want plastic twine in his, for his bales. I don't know, I don't know because this stuff uh, will deteriorate. I, I'm not sure why he doesn't want plastic. So um, that's <laughs> one of the reasons why I went with this. Uh, the other reason is the baler was set for sisal twine. Um, I, I don't know if... Uh, my New Holland dealer, or somebody had told me that there are different um, uh, parts for your knotter uh, for different uh, either sisal or plastic. That if you have it set up for sisal, it works best with sisal. If you have the plastic uh, bill hook, I think, one or I think it's the bill hook. Um, there's different parts for different twines is what I was told. I think it was a New Holland dealer. And this is for sisal. Um, for me to go to plastic, uh, I'd have to look into how to change it or adjust it or just <laughs> put plastic in and try it. Um, but being that I have one of my customers and he buys the majority of my hay, uh, he wants this stuff. So the problem I was having with this stuff were thick spots. There were very thick spots in this uh, twine and that's what was jamming up my knotter a few times. Um, you guys saw my video the other day when I was having knotter or baler trouble. It was just that the, the twine was in the wrong place. Um, but I did have an issue with a couple missed bales and it was just uh, <laughs> throwing twine all over the place basically. The knotter was just throwing it everywhere. So um, I did find some real thick spots. So it is what it is for now. I could try maybe a different uh, manufacturer, but for now, this is well, I, I bought this back in the winter time, so I want to use it up. So let's put it in. Use only genuine New Holland wine, marketing at its finest. All right, uh, basically, there's a, a yellow tag on here. You start in the center, you find your next one out at the edge, you pull this find which end is attached and which isn't that one isn't so you got this big hairy end on here so oh here comes my hay customer i'll come back with you all right we got some hay loaded all right where was i so basically you just pull the end out that isn't tied you start in the middle and you tie these two together um what I, excuse me what i try to do is cut it off here so you don't want this mess here you want a nice thin spot uh to make your knot at and then just trim your excess same with this side so let me get this together uh, i just tie a square knot i know guys have different knots they like to use i've been using a square for a while um, i have known some farmers to even put a little bit of grease on the knot itself i've never resorted to doing that i haven't heard it if you guys have let me know so all right let's get this in all right, we got twine in. I have to grease it yet. I'm going to uh, do that in the shade. I'll pull it back in the shop here to grease it. Uh, I think the rest of the day, I'm just gonna unload some hay, keep an eye on the wind. Uh, I might do some spraying a little bit uh, more in the afternoon tonight. Uh, evening, I should say. So just kind of a, basically a cleanup day. And if I feel ambitious, I'm gonna start unloading some hay. The guy that just came took uh, <clears throat> about a, three quarters of a wagon out of here. So I still have a quarter wagon on load. And of course I have these three in here loaded. So I got hay to unload and it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So I can do that even tomorrow on a rainy day. So, all right guys, thanks for coming along. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Uh, like I say, the weather is supposed to be a little rainier, but we have rainy day projects. I still have to get to the 560. Uh, there's, a, <laughs> there's always something to do. So, all right guys, thanks for watching.